The quest here was to see, can a water heater explode? Can the water heater in your home blow up? We've simulated a bunch of failures that I myself have personally seen over my 21 years of experience. Don't ever do this. We have this camera and this camera so that we can monitor a pressure gauge. We have a drone parked up overhead. That dome all of a sudden just flipped inside out a little bit. We're actually exchanging the water. It is really, really hot. We hope to be able to give you some really cool angles of what's about to happen. We're going over to a friend of mine's house that's got a couple of acres. Hopefully we can pull this off safely. Started with a heater that's been kicking around in our shop for a while that we had plans on this for a long time. The water heater in question, I've even got a spare water heater just in case this one doesn't blow up like we want it to. Now where we got the inspiration for this video was the TV show Mythbusters. They actually did this several times about 11 or 12 years ago. They showed in their videos the amount of force that could happen when these things do blow up. Really all we've done is simulate three very realistic failures that could happen to any electric water heater. We've got the lower element directly connected to a generator, bypassing the upper cutoff switch, and bypassing the lower thermostat. Power wire actually runs under the bricks and that's kind of on purpose. We expect this water heater to go skyward. We don't want it ripping the wires out of our generator. We've kind of got them set up in a way to where they're snug and they're going to make contact to heat the water heater, but they will slip away if this thing starts to go skyward. We've also capped off our relief valve. Uh, we're filling it from the bottom, letting all the air bleed out the top. As soon as we get water geysering out the top of this, we can shut that off, get the top capped and everything else. This is our pressure relief valve. Every water heater has to have one by code. Don't ever do this. If you do this to your water heater, it might end up like this water heater will end up. If this valve is dripping, capping it is not the solution. You need to call a plumber because there's some other things that are going on. A lot of people may even think that when this valve starts to drip, the valve went bad. Not the case at all. It's kind of like the airbag in your car. If your airbag pops out, it's because it saved your life. It's not because it was a faulty airbag. If this valve is dripping, that's a big warning sign. So don't ever cap it like we have here. We are trained professionals. We are doing this in a closed course environment. We have this camera and this camera, little mini cams, like little action cams. One of these cameras is gonna be like a Wi-Fi feed to my cell phone so that we can monitor a pressure gauge that's gonna be sitting right here from a safe distance. So that way we don't have to be near the heater if we don't need to be near the heater. The other camera is gonna be recording 24 seven so that we actually get it on video of the pressure readings. But with any luck, this one that's recording will be going for a ride and you'll get to watch this thing from the seat of the heater as it goes skyward. We're gonna make sure that this thing just heats and heats and heats until it pops. In the bottom of the tank, you have a concave dome of metal, and that helps give it its structure and it helps uh, give it its strength for holding back pressure. We have taken the bottom of this heater off and there was a big piece of insulation here. We've taken that out. Before this thing kind of goes off, what I expect is this dome is actually gonna kind of flip and pop the other direction. As it pops the other way, it's actually gonna be sticking out the bottom of the heater a little bit. Once it's sticking out the bottom of the heater, it's gonna lose its ability to stretch and move any further. And then at that point, we're in the danger zone of this thing like going up like a rocket. It's open wet. So what we're taping to the side of it right now are some auxiliary battery packs for these mini cams. These mini cams will die on battery pretty quick without them. This might take several hours. The mini cam is not designed to run that long on a single battery. If this thing does go skyward, we might lose these. I have a feeling when this thing goes off, it's gonna go off with some pretty good speed to it. <laughs> That's not the way to do it. Holy cow. If there is G-forces trying to pull the camera down, uh, the tape's gonna pull it open and then we lose our camera. We definitely don't want that. Now we're set. Our gauge goes up to 300 pounds of pressure. It doesn't go any higher than that. It doesn't pin the backside of the needle until probably 400 pounds of pressure. Since we are doing this with a Wi-Fi feed, we actually want a little bit of a streamer so that we can make sure we see motion from the streamer. We don't want to question, did our Wi-Fi lock up? We've put a mark on there at 300 and another mark at like 330. If I had to guess, this thing goes off somewhere around 330, but we're gonna find out. The Wi-Fi camera is feeding to my cell phone right now. It's working perfectly. We're able to see our little tassel that we hung. Uh, we're able to see it. 
flap in the wind to let us know that the Wi-Fi camera is not freezing up or anything. What I expect to happen is pressure is gonna build up to a point, and then as pressure builds strong enough, it's either gonna blow the bottom dome completely off the heater, or it's gonna start flipping the dome. It's gonna start putting pressure on it and distorting it. When that happens, pressure is gonna either level off and stop climbing, or pressure might actually drop. If that dome pops, and now all of a sudden there's more volume in the tank, pressure would probably drop pretty sharply. So if we see that happening, we can always walk down there and kind of check on things and everything. Currently, right now, we are closing in on about 180 pounds of pressure already in that heater. It's been heating for less than 30 minutes. All right, just checking in here. We are just passing 240 pounds of pressure inside that water heater. Its safe operating range is 150 pounds or less. That's what the tank's rated for. Its useful range is 150 pounds. It's actually tested up to 300 PSI. We still have a little ways to go, and I'm sure they don't test every single one off the assembly line. We've been heating for 40 minutes and we've gone from 65 PSI to 240 PSI, doing nothing other than heating water inside that tank. So it's pretty cool, the, the power of water and the power of electricity mixed with that water on what it can create. We now have 270 pounds of pressure inside that tank, and we have a drone parked up overhead, hoping to catch this thing as it rockets up towards the drone. So. With all this, we hope to be able to give you some really cool angles of what's about to happen. Right now, we are passing 300 PSI in that tank. That is the maximum test pressure that that tank is. It's not even rated for it. It's rated for 150 PSI. It's maximum test pressure is 300 to give it some cushion. Anything beyond now, the tank is not designed to handle at all. We went from 65 PSI to over 300 in 50 minutes. Very realistic that this could happen in a very quick time frame if the conditions are right. We are over 300. This gauge is kind of small and it gets a little blurry whenever you're trying to look at it on the action camera. And uh, the gauge only goes to 300. So now we're trying to guess like every, every bit above 300, what do we actually see? Oh, oh, something. We're hearing noises. I bet our pressure just dropped dramatically on that gauge. So we just heard a really loud noise, a really loud metal noise. And our pressure just went from 330 down to 150. I'll walk down there and make sure the tank didn't just spring a leak. I don't think it did because we're still holding 150 pounds. So what that means is that dome all of a sudden just flipped inside out a little bit. And now we're gonna have a really long waiting game to get this thing to build back up enough pressure because what's gonna happen now is it's gonna have to keep flipping and keep flipping and keep flipping that dome and keep getting it farther upside down. This thing's not gonna take off until that dome is 100% flipped. First things we notice, we have a whole bunch of like surface metal debris on our stones here. These are all like pieces of surface metal from this, from what was on the bottom of that tank. So I'm willing to bet, stick it up underneath here, it is starting to invert that dome. Our hopes that this was gonna fail in glorious fashion quickly have gone down the drain. So now we have to wait for that whole dome to flip. Bulging out big time. So now we can kick back and wait. Try to fly back through. Nice. One thing that we're doing right now, you see all the water spraying out of the top of the heater. We're actually exchanging the water in the heater. The current water, as you can see, it's steaming. It's pretty warm today, so for it to be steaming says that it is really, really hot. Well, an electric water heater is only designed to get the water up to a certain temperature. We can only expand water while we're heating it. So what we're actually doing right now is we're exchanging the water that's in the tank with new fresh cold water that will be much colder. Therefore, we can actually heat it and heat it well and get a good temperature differential. What we're thinking is it's actually faster to exchange the water and kind of start back over at 60 pounds of pressure. And within, within 10 minutes, it'll be back up to 120. So that's not that big of a deal. 
However, when the water gets crazy hot like it was, you lose your ability to keep expanding the water. Therefore, we lose our ability to keep pushing the dome down in the bottom. If you were to look in the bottom right now, you would see the dome starting to protrude from the bottom of the heater. It's good that we took the bottom off and it's good that we have it setting on these two by fours because that's gonna give that dome plenty of room to completely flip upside down. Once that dome gets upside down, pressure is gonna start to climb and hopefully this thing takes off. up to 210 PSI in the tank. The bottom dome is completely flipped, like it's sticking out the bottom of the water heater. So we're kind of at that point where it's either going to rupture in a small way and just fizzle out, or it's gonna blow up. If I had a hunch or if I had a guess, I would say it could fail at any time between here and 330 PSI. It is a pretty cheap water heater from Home Depot, so they are not gonna hold up to the same quality and the same ratings that a lot of other heaters are. We did have to prop it up just a little bit higher because as that dome flipped, even though we have it sitting up on two by fours, that dome started getting really close to the pavers that we have down there. And we didn't want the dome to push on the pavers and then it like tip over. It also looks like there may be water coming out of the bottom of it right now, so. So yes, indeed, we do have a leak. Now, I don't think it's our tank leaking. I think it's our element leaking where it screws into the front of the water heater. We are going to go ahead and drain this thing down, put a different element in it with a different rubber seal, fire it back up because we really wanna to get to a tank failure, not necessarily an element failure. We swapped out the element that we thought was leaking Got everything all fired back up. It got up to about 150 PSI, and I noticed a couple more drops of water coming out of the bottom of the heater. I did a little bit more investigation, and it's not actually the element that it's leaking. It's leaking from somewhere around the bottom of the tank, just below the element, but the, the water is rising up and through the access hole to get to the element. Well, ultimately, we replaced the element we didn't need to. But we've stayed the course, Checked on it a few minutes ago when it was at 180 pounds of pressure. So even though it's leaking, it's still climbing in pressure. And right now, if I look at it, we are at about 195 pounds of pressure right now. So pressure is still climbing pretty rapidly inside this thing. We don't really know. We're kind of staying and sticking it out and we're gonna see if the bottom just tears open and let's go. But we're pretty sure that this thing's just gonna get to a point where it's leaking so bad that it just doesn't build any more pressure and it just stays at that level. So stick with us here for a little bit as we kind of let this thing play out. Uh, it's looking like it might be a whole lot harder to get one of these to blow up like a rocket, like we thought it was going to. Well, the leak has gotten bad enough that it's leaking worse then we're expanding and so the pressure has stopped building now that we've shut everything off we can probably go watch that pressure gauge just steadily fall now because it's leaking faster than we can build pressure we're already falling we're at 2 205 right now and it's dropping pretty quickly i can see water dripping out of the bottom of it on the front you can actually see this two by four here is pretty wet on the side dripping out of it on the back we were also trying to bring you some angles that you would have never ever seen before in an experiment like this. Right now, we have a drone hovering about 300 feet overhead, so we were hoping that the water heater was gonna fly past that drone. We have several action cameras strapped to the water heater, so we were literally gonna take you on a journey with the water heater. We had awfully high aspirations for how this was gonna turn out, but unfortunately, if this guy doesn't take flight, none of that happens. Ultimately, we failed, but at the same time, we learned a whole, whole lot. So the quest here was to see, can a water heater explode? Can, can the water heater in your home blow up? And I think we've proven 
that the odds of that happening are incredibly, incredibly low. We had to fail this thing several ways just to get it into the condition where it could blow up. And we tried with two different heaters and we were unsuccessful at getting it to explode. It's looking like water heater manufacturers may have changed the way these are made so that they don't fail instantaneously anymore. The latest story I could find was about 11 years ago. It actually happened in a neighborhood where the water heater blew up out of the house and actually went through the roof of the house and landed in the street about a block away. At least we've learned in this video that the odds of a water heater blowing up in your house are very, very low. As always, the goal for our channel is to bring you plumbing videos in a way that you've never seen them before. And we didn't want to leave you hanging on this video without actually getting to see water heaters blow up. So enjoy a few clips from Mythbusters actually pulling this off quite a few years ago. So if you haven't figured out by now, this took us quite a few days to pull off. We figured we'd also throw in some additional footage here for you. Just some of the stuff we went through over the last few days trying to make this happen. All right, so if we haven't figured out by now, nah. Oh, she's getting heavy. Let's see if that wind's gonna die down here. I'm gonna roll it my way so I'm not like working over the top of it. We are already down to 35 on this drone. I didn't know these drone batteries lose I charged all three of them and put them back in the case. You try to think of a thousand things you need and you always end up forgetting one. <laughs> now you gotta stand there and feed Austin. We're gonna get to a point here where we gotta like shut the generator off, park the drones and wait on batteries to charge. Don't stop rolling, Austin. I left two things at the house. I just realized I got a freaking four wheel drive truck and I'm making all these trips from my truck to here when I could just drive my truck down here. There's a good chance those T-posts right there are outlining where his septic tank is. And the last thing you want to do is drive over somebody's septic tank. Maybe we will have enough hose, let's see. Docks are getting wet because this ground is so soggy right here. You're not coming down here. We're watching it from up there. She said, I can't walk all the way down here. It's losing connection to my phone. Can you see the drone up in the way sky? Up there? Yeah, that's fine. Stand up so I don't look like a lazy butt. Found the easy way to get these things out of here. You got to tap them with a piece of tape to pull them out. In the words of the late Lord Farquaad, some of you may die, but that's a risk I'm willing to take. This thing was just pouring water down my pants. <laughs> I didn't really, it's, it makes it look like I just wet myself. Man, don't pee your pants right there. I had it sitting here like this and it's just running water down my leg. Yeah. 